All right, so today I want to talk about tagged template literals. Now, tem template literals or template strings, these are strings that you create in JavaScript using the backtick character. So we've got single quotes, we've got double quotes, we also have the backtick character right here. So I've got double quotes inside of here, this is the backtick, and then if I wanted, I could put some single quotes inside there. The cool thing about the template strings, template literals, is that you can add inside of here variables. So we can do interpolation, which means if I put a dollar sign in the curly braces, I can put a variable or any expression actually. I can do like this. I can do calculations inside of them. And that is going to be converted into the value of that expression as part of the string. And then we can write them out or use them someplace else. Um, I wanted to just draw your attention to a couple of things about these template strings before we talk about the tagged template strings. Um, if you've got escape sequences like this, so my tab and my new line character, here is the output of this first line here. So I'm saying I'm going to console log the number one and then this first string. And there's the tab and here's the new line character and they're the rest of the string and there's the variable num, its value 41 being written out. Now the second one and the third one, those ones we actually see the slash t and slash n. So there's two ways of dealing with escape sequences inside of here. One is the same way that you normally would with a regular string. That's by putting the backslash in front of it. So what we're saying is I want to actually write out a backslash followed by the letter t. Same thing here. I want to write a backslash followed by the letter n. So that's how we're getting that in number two. Number three, we have string.raw. This is the template literal way of doing exactly that. We're saying, all right, I want to take the string in its raw format. So don't worry about escape sequences or anything like that. Just whatever I write, that's what I really meant to write. So here we have it. Um, we get the same value as if we had done the extra backslash here and here. And then the last one, I'm just demonstrating that we can do an expression. All right, so that's a summary of the template literals, the template strings with the backtick character. Now, tagged template literals, don't know why I'm having such a hard time saying that today, but tagged template literals are when you take one of these template strings and you add a function to the front of it. So here, I'm writing out this string and I've got two variables that I've stuck inside of it. Now if I were to create a function here, let's call it f, I can now use that function like this. I just have to put the name of the function in front of it. No parentheses, nothing else, just by putting the name of the function right here in front, touching the backtick character, that means this function is going to be called and the result of this function is what gets put inside of here, this txt. So if I just said, all right, let's return hello. Now, if I log out the value of txt, so we'll clear this out. There we go. Hello. That's the value that got written out. It's this function got called, whatever its return value is, that's the value of this. And you may think, okay, well, that's kind of useless. I've just lost everything that was inside my string. But these things all get passed into here. So we can, let's put a variable in here called strings. It doesn't have to be called strings. That's just the name that I'm using. This is actually going to be an array, an array of every string that is inside here. And you think, well, it's just one string, but it's actually whatever comes before the first interpolation, in between any of the interpolations, and at the very end, after the last interpolation. So all of these pieces are going to make up an array. This is going to be an array with three things in it. I'm just going to comment out these lines here so we don't keep seeing those. Save that. And we'll run it. There we go. Here's the array. So you can see there's one, two, three things inside of this array. Okay, great. So we have an array. What else do we get? What about these values? Well, 
we can say, okay, there's one, there's two, there's three. If there was three of them, first one would go here, the second one would go here, the third one would go here. Or ES6 being the wonderful thing it is, we'll just use the rest operator to grab every one of those and we'll call them, let's say, expressions. They are just variables here, but they could be expressions. It could be first plus something like that. This is an expression, so the expression, all of them are going to go in here. So we actually have two arrays now. We test that, we run it. There we go. Ham and pineapple. That's the value of these two things, these two expressions. So we have an array of strings and an array of this, the uh, expressions. Now, you may think, okay, well, that's great. You're getting an array with three things, but that's because I've got three strings. But there is always going to be, even if you've got a variable at the beginning and the end, an expression at the beginning and the end, you are always going to get what comes before the first one and what comes after. They could be empty, but there it is. So I've got an empty string, the space and space, and then another empty string. So we are getting a value here and here. For that reason, this strings array that we've got right here is always going to be longer than the expressions. The expressions is always going to be one less than that value. If you wanted to do something with just the strings, you could. If you wanted to do something with just the expressions in the functions, you could. If you want to piece them all together the way you want, you can just say, I do not like and then I'm going to take this, so I take one piece out of there, or I can take that array and say, you know what, I'm going to join. I don't know if there's going to be 2, 3, 12, 42 things inside of expressions, but I'm going to put space and space in between every one of them. So it's going to write out all those values like that. There we go. I do not like ham, space, and space, pineapple. If there was another value, like that, there we go. There's the ham and pineapple and ham. So as many as there are inside of here, this is going to bring them all together and just put that and in between each one of them. All right, now, if you want to do something with those variables, Let's go back to what we had here. There we go. I've got this back to its original state. If I wanted to do something with both arrays, I know that this one is always going to be one less in length than this one. So we can actually use the array reduce method to convert those arrays into a single string. And not just by joining them, but I can still actually do things to each one of them. So let's take our uh, expressions array. That's the shorter one. And we're going to call the reduce method. The reduce method, we get an accumulator. We get the expression or whatever the value is going to be. And then there'll be an index number as well. So we're going to call that. Let's just do an arrow function. So this is the function that gets called each time it loops through each of the expressions, however many there are, then the value, the starting value for the accumulator is, I'm going to take whatever the first string is. So right here, we're going to say strings number zero. That will be, I don't like pizza with space. That string, that's going to be my starting value. That's going to get passed into the reduce function. If you don't know how the reduce function is, I'll put a link down in the description for you to my video on reduce explaining how that works. But I'm going to start with my first string here, then each time we run through here, I'm going to take whatever the value of the accumulator is, plus whatever the current expression is, plus whatever the next string is going to be. So strings, and inside of there, index plus one. So whatever the next value is, because I know I'm always going to have one at the end. So if this is index number 72, then string number 73 is going to be this one. The strings is always one longer, so we've always got one extra index at the end. 
So we're running this function, we're going to return the value of this, and then we're going to write it out here. Okay, so I should see something that looks just like this. There we go. I don't like pizza with ham and pineapple. That's going to be the full sentence, but I have an opportunity here because I'm working with each of the individual values to do something with it. So we could do something as simple as to uppercase. It's a string, so I'm going to convert it to uppercase. Let's clear and run it again. There we go. Ham and pineapple have been capitalized. And you can do whatever it is that you want to do inside of here, but you have the opportunity with the tagged template literal to manipulate whatever the contents are and return whatever parts of it that you want in whatever order that you want. All right, so I hope that uh, helps you out. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I'll answer as many of them as I have time for. The code sample is linked to down in the description as well as the video to the reduce, the link to the reduce video. And as always, thanks for watching.